You know what one of my all time biggest pet peeves is? Is anytime I go to a conference and I sit in on one and sometimes multiple talks where people are like, people are just afraid of change. They're afraid of change, it's just the way it is. They like to be stubborn, they like to put red tape up, they're just afraid of change, da 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 da. The reason it's my biggest pet peeve is because it's just not true. Saying someone is afraid of change is a grossly oversimplified way to explain why they might have objections in the process. And so what I'm going to explain today is why people at work can sometimes come across as being afraid of change when it is absolutely not what they're afraid of. So we're gonna do that doing the DISC profile. I'm gonna explain a couple of things about some of the different work styles that show up at work. And believe me, when those people that you think are afraid of change are coming to you with objections, you should absolutely be listening to what they're saying. I'm gonna talk through why. But before we get into that, two quick things. Number one, if you like these videos that I've been doing, hey, let me know. Subscribe to my channel, hit like, hit, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, share it with your social media if you find that you have friends or colleagues that might be interested in this sort of thing. That will let me know that you like what I'm doing, you find it valuable, and I might keep doing them. Number two, if you want to get in touch and learn more about different work styles and the, the different DISC personalities that might exist on your team, this is something that I do. I love DISC. DISC is a freakishly accurate way to assess someone's work style. It can be used in so, 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 so many different situations. If you want to know more about that, head over to zenworkplace.com where you're always going to be able to find out stuff I'm doing like free web webinars, joining my community, finding my podcast, but you'll also be able to find different information about bringing DISC profiles to your teams, doing different type of team building retreats around the DISC profile, whether that be around communication, problem solving, building highly resilient teams. It works in a variety of different settings and I can help you to craft a strategy using different types of DISC profiles that are going to be especially pertinent to the challenges that your team is having right now. So head over to zenworkplace.com. You're gonna wanna click that contact button in the upper hand corner, send me an email. I will reach right back out and we'll talk to you about what's going on with your team. All right, but let's talk about why people are afraid of change, shall we, or why we think they're afraid of change. So I'm not going to do a deep dive into DISCs today, but I'm going to give you a brief overview of the four primary styles that exist in the DISC profile. They're D, I, S, and C. Aptly, right? D stands for dominant. Dominant are like your natural born leaders. They're usually the executives in your organization. Not always, but usually it's that type of profile that tends to rise through the ranks pretty quickly. They are all about big, bold ideas and moving fast and getting stuff done. And they honestly don't care if they break things along the way or if they hurt people's feelings in the process. They, they don't care. The next one we have is I, and I is the influencer profile. Now I, just like D, we can see they're next to each other on this chart. Just like D, they also like to move at a fast pace. They also really like big, bold ideas. But what separates them from the D profile is that they actually do care what people think. They do care how people feel. This is a profile that it's very into collaboration. They wanna make sure people are feeling really good, but they also really like moving, moving quickly, not really always the best at taking details into consideration uh, when they're trying to implement their new strategies. The next part of the profile is the S side. Now we're moving down into these bottom two profiles. The S's are kind of like your office moms and your office dads. They prefer a much slower pace. They really like taking care of people. S stands for steadiness in the DISC profile, but I would actually much prefer if it stood for supporter or service because those are really their primary drivers. They are much more motivated by helping out the team, helping out other people, helping Helping out those strong leaders that they usually end up in support roles for. It's just, it is a much more um, service oriented other style rather than focused on the self and what I can achieve. They're not actually that interested in, in making sure that they come out as the top dog. They're much more interested in supporting other people as the top dog. 
And lastly, we have our C's, and C's stand for conscientiousness. Now, our C's are our details people, right? They love working with like spreadsheets and data, and you know, they can tend to be much more detail oriented positions like. IT or accounting or engineering tend to have a lot of these C profiles in them because they're just so much more detail oriented. Now, the balance of that is that C's don't really care for emotion. They, uh, they Just like the D's, you can see the D's and the C's are right next to each other. They don't really care what necessarily people think. Now, Broad, that was our big broad overview of the DIS profile. I could literally talk about this stuff all day, but I want to get right into the heart of the question. So the DIS profile, it's, it's aptly on this graph split into these four different quadrants, and it's actually pretty brilliant to understand how these quadrants are set up. You have these two ones up at the top are D's and I's. They really like to be you know, active. They like to be doing lots of things. They like a fast paced. They tend to be very assertive. These are the two profiles that are always gonna dominate the conversation. They tend to be very dynamic, very charismatic. Love those big, bold ideas. That's the top up here, okay? Now, if we look at the profiles that are on the bottom, the S's and the C's, they tend to be the opposite of that. So you're going to be looking at people that are much more thoughtful about how they're going about things. They tend to prefer a much, much, much slower pace than the D's and the I's. They also tend to be much more calm, methodical, and careful about their approach. If you look at their priorities, we can start to understand some of the differences here. So our S's, our priorities are giving support, maintaining stability, keep that word in mind, ding, 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 and enjoying collaboration. Our C's tend to prioritize ensuring accuracy, ensuring things are done well, maintaining stability, ding, 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 and challenging assumptions, all right? Those, that, th this is the difference that we're talking about, is the D's and the I's tend to work at that much faster pace. They tend to enjoy doing stuff. They're, th these are the two profiles that they're very much like, you know, ready, fire, aim. If we were to equate this to like ready, aim, fire, D's and I's are like ready, fire, aim. They want to go after what they want and they don't care if they break things along the way. C's and S's, because they do have this priority for maintaining stability, they do care if you break things along the way. Now, the thing of it is, is that in terms of people who are able to, you know those times when, you know, you're, you're driving your car down the road and you can see like a rock is about to hit your windshield. Uh, this has happened to me so many times. I live in New Hampshire, so, you know, we, you know, it's much more rural. So maybe this doesn't happen in more urban places. But I remember like anytime a rock is about to hit my windshield, I'm driving down the road and you can almost see the rock coming at you in slow motion. You're like, no, 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 it's going to do it. And like, you see it coming in slow motion every single time. That is exactly how our S's and our C's experience these fast paced pushes towards new initiatives and big projects. It's like they are the ones that can see the problems coming about 15 miles away maybe not 15 miles, but like pretty far away. They can see these things well in advance. And for them, it's like a rock coming slowly at the windshield of our car. They know it's going to hit and they're bracing for it. The D's and the I's, they can't see it. It is literally like they're blinded to the problems. They cannot see it because their energy and attention is focused elsewhere. And so when we're talking about people that are afraid of change, what is usually happening almost always is that you have an initiative led by someone with one of these strong, fast paced styles. They either have a D or an I or a combination of the two, and they just want to move. They want to get to that next step. They want to get their win. They want to get stuff done. They want to be able to celebrate the victory. And in the process of doing that, they overlook a lot of of details that could help them to really execute the project well because their priority is not always about executing the project well, it's about getting the project done. These people, these are the ones that are like, don't let perfect get in the way of good enough. D's and I's are our good enough people. S's and C's are like, wait, 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 wait. Good is the enemy of great. If we just slow down a little bit, we can make this project great and not break things along the way and not piss people off in the meantime.
So that's what's going on. Fundamentally, when we have the S and the C work style involved, they're the ones that are going to be afraid of change. But if you dismiss them as, you know, you're just you're just afraid of change. I can never please you. You just, you never agree with anything I want to do. You're afraid of change. If you do that, you are missing out on so much information that your S's and your C's can give you about how to execute the project well. You know, I mentioned I do team retreats with teams all the time and almost always one of the key activities that we engage in is a problem solving exercise. And what what ha what happens is essentially I get the group together. Sometimes I split them into two groups just depending, but I get the group together, I give them a problem that none of them have any expertise in and they have to look and figure out how to solve this problem kind of using their collective knowledge focusing on communication and collaboration. Now, here is what happens almost every single time in these problem solving exercises. Remember, the problem I give them, none of them are experts in. So they're all kind of starting from that same place, right? Here's what happens. The Ds try to come in and they just try to take over and they try to take the leadership position and, and guide the whole process. The Is, they're cracking jokes the whole time. They're kind of making fun of it. The Ss are just quiet they don't usually say anything for the first part of the project. They really don't. They're just like, they quiet, they kind of watch what's going on. They take everything in. And then about halfway through, they start to pipe up and they start to go, guys, guys, I, I, I think it's this. I, I, I think it's this, but they do it in that really soft voice. So no one's hearing them because the Ds are already there trying to control the situation. Eyes are cracking jokes. The Cs are over here. They've built out a big spreadsheet to try to figure the thing out. And the Ss are piping up. They're going, guys, I, I think this is the answer. I think this is. Now I'm paying attention because as, as a facilitator, I'm not engaging in this. I'm sitting back and watching and trying to make observations to help the team, right? And I see this every single time. And every single time when the S's are trying to speak up and tell you what they think the answer is, they are ignored and they are almost always right. Almost always they're right or they're pretty close. They're like, they're teetering around being right. Certainly much more right than the D's who are again, controlling the situation, the I's who are cracking jokes. The C's tend to get there too, but the C's tend to be so much more challenging in their approach in terms of how they're articulating that they're right and their solution is the right one, that they turn a lot of people off. So they're like, oh, you know, those guys over there, come on, they're just so difficult. They're always making a fuss, all this stuff. So people are turned off by the attitude of the C's. The C's tend to get it right too, though. The point that I'm trying to make is that your S's and your C's are your highly detail-oriented people. They're also the people who tend to have a very high priority on doing things well on doing things, implementing things productively in a way that's going to support the team with a very high degree of accuracy and maintain that stability. So in the process of trying to maintain that stability, they're doing everything they can to get those D's and those I's to see that, no, you cannot be the bull in the china shop. You're going to break a lot of things. That's not going to be good for any of us. Sometimes slowing down a little bit and listening to what our friends that are, have these S and C styles have to say can save you so much time in the long run. Because not only are they fantastic at pointing out the details that you probably can't see, they're usually right when they do it. But I want to dig a little bit deeper in this. I want to just show you a couple supplement reports. And the, our supplement reports are great because what they show us is how people actually scored on the eight different priorities. This I said there are four primary styles in the DISC profile, but your primary style is at least partially determined by which priorities you score the highest on. So there are eight of those. The priorities are results. You can see them down at the bottom. Action. Enthusiasm collaboration, support, ability, activity, and challenge. So we have this one disc profile here. This is Caitlin's disc profile. Caitlin's a C. You can see in this circle, she's she's right down the, the, down the middle C. And we can see that her highest priorities are accuracy, or support, and then stability. Caitlin's going to be one of those people who you think are afraid of change.
but she's not. She's just prioritizing doing things well because she has this high accuracy score, right? And then support, she wants to make sure people on the team are taken care of. She also has the stability score, so she wants to work at that more moderate pace. She wants things, this is like, the, this is the difference between kind of making those big, bold changes and making incremental changes. Caitlin is going to prefer every day of the week to make incremental changes so that people feel supported and things can get accomplished well. However, Caitlin is probably not one of the people that is going to speak up when she sees problems because Caitlin has a low challenge score. Now, last week I did a video all about the people who tend to cause interpersonal conflict in the workplace and what, what is it different about their disc profile that results in that. And the difference is the challenge score. Challenge is how we engage with conflict. Whether or not we love conflict, we like, like debate, or we like a good challenge, we don't mind trying to overcome those obstacles, or whether or not we want to dive under a table and hide when a, when a conflict comes up, right? And you know, the thing about conflict is that in order for a team to be high performing, high functioning, we need to have them engaging with conflict. That's part of the process. But you need to have it in, you need to create a psychologically safe work environment in which they are able to engage in conflict in productive ways. Caitlin's one of those people that she might be really hesitant about change, but she's not probably going to speak up as much. Now, let's compare her profile to John's profile here. Now, John is a CS, which basically means, you can see in this, this circle, he sits right on the line between the two. It tends to mean he can either go to C or either go to S, and he can do about 50-50% of the time, just depending on the situation. Let's look at John's priorities. His highest priority is stability. His second highest priority is that challenge score, and his third highest is accuracy. He's also got a little bit of a support tendency, but really, this is, this is a very classic CS combination profile. John, as opposed to Caitlin, he's going to speak up when he sees those problems. He is absolutely going to say, guys, this is going to be a problem, and it's going to be a problem because of A, B, and C, and then someone with those strong DI tendencies. And you can see up on the, in the graph here, you know, when people have strong tendencies into S and C, they typically do not have these DI tendencies that are like, we got to move, we got to get stuff done, we got we to gotta hit our mark. You can see even on his profile, listen, his results score is very low. That means his priority is not on moving fast. His priority is on doing things well. And he's going to speak up when he thinks that things are not done well. So John is going to be much, much, much more likely than Caitlin to be labeled as one of those people that's afraid of change because he's not afraid to challenge. He's not afraid to challenge those big bullies and say, you're, you're going to mess this up and you need to know that going into it. Okay. Now the problem is that because people with these C tendencies, they tend to um, not deal as well with the, with the social game in the office. That's why they're the ones that get labeled as being afraid of change because they, they just struggle with how do I gain influence in the office? How do I gain buy-in from people? How do I get people on my side? It has to do with how they work, how they focus their energy. I'm not going to go into all that today, but there are reasons that we think these people are afraid of change. What I want to challenge you is that if you have people that are coming up, that are saying, this is gonna be a problem, this is gonna be a problem, let's default to assuming that they have positive intent in what they're doing. Listen, it is not easy for people when, especially if they see a problem with something a leader or their boss or an executive wants to do, it is a very, very vulnerable thing for people to come forward and say, guys, this is, this is going to be a problem. It is a very vulnerable act. And oftentimes they take a lot of flack for it. They get labeled, they get stereotyped, all this stuff based on the fact that they're really just trying to help. They're trying to support the the group. They're trying to maintain that stability and make sure that the organization achieves its best possible goal, not its quickest possible goal, its best possible goal. So when people are bringing up these concerns, instead of labeling them as you're afraid of change, maybe take a step back, try to look at it from their perspective, understand what work style they're bringing to the table and say, okay, how can I use the information that they're giving me to my greatest possible advantage? How can we use this information and their perspective to make our results even 
better. And might it take us a couple more weeks or even a little bit longer to get there? Sure. But if we achieve a you know, 20, 30% better result, isn't that extra time worth it? Think about that next time you're labeling someone as being afraid of change.